Well, shalom, everyone. This is Evangelist August Rosado with Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. We want to thank you so much for tuning in to our show today. I trust that everybody had a great week. Trust you had a great Thanksgiving with you and your family. And here we are. Today is December the 3rd, 2016. It's, it's so hard to believe that 2016 just blew right by. And uh, before you know it, we will be in the brand new year of 2017. And folks, I got to say a day closer to the Lord. And so given the situation that we see going on around the world, in the Middle East, and especially here in our own backyard in the United States of America, folks, we, we do indeed live in a very, very dangerous dangerous world where Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it we see this wickedness here in America we see this wickedness in the Middle East we see this wickedness going on all over the world we are living indeed in some very very dangerous times as a matter of fact I'm going to be talking about on today's program uh, a statement by the um, the physicist uh, Stephen Hawking, in which he said that we are living in the most dangerous time in human history. And even though I'm no fan of uh, Stephen Hawking, what he said, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly right. And actually, his statement is a page right out of Bible prophecy. And we're going to talk about that on the 45 minutes that we have on this broadcast today. Now remember, every Saturday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can join me on Blog Talk Radio. Actually, it's Today in Bible Prophecy Radio. So you can go to the Blog Talk Radio website, punch in the search engine, Today in Bible Prophecy Radio, and it will take you to the uh, the brand new uh, uh, broadcast that we have going on, like we do today. We also upload these broadcasts uh, onto my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. You can go there, listen to the audio. And, of course, we also record the program and we upload it to YouTube. So all of those who follow us or subscribe on YouTube or just happen to find the video can watch it as well. So we upload the video and we upload the audio onto our website. Again, that's todayinbibleprophecy.org, todayinbibleprophecy.org. You can look at all the pictures that we have from our trips to Israel, Rome. Uh, you can um, also, again, the videos, the archives. And, of course, we have a PayPal button for those who are blessed by this ministry uh, to help support this ministry so they can go ahead and do exactly that. We also have a tour to Israel leaving March 25th through April the 5th. That will be Israel along with Petra in southern Jordan. If you want to come to Israel with us, now is time to make plans. And so go to my website. You can check it out. Just look at the Israel Prophecy Tour, March 25th through April the 5th. You can check that out. You can also visit the website, ChristianToursToIsrael.com. You can call my tour agent, Eyal Evan. His name is spelled E-Y-A-L. Eyal Evan, E-V-A-N, his last name, his first name, E-Y-A-L, e E-Y-A-L, Evan. Let him know you want to come to Israel with us. Call him toll free, 1-888-300-3038. That's 1-888-300-3038. <clears throat> and I'll be teaching Bible prophecy on location. And so follow me on the social media networks. Follow me on Facebook, Simply August Rosado. Send me a Facebook friend request. Follow me on Twitter. August Rosado at Bible underscore prophecy. Bible underscore prophecy. On Twitter, I have all of the major news developments, the news headlines on Twitter. And if you're into LinkedIn, you can follow me on LinkedIn as Evangelist August <clears throat> Rosado. I'm not on LinkedIn a whole lot. I just upload stuff to LinkedIn, you know, giving everyone updates and heads up about the radio shows and so on and so forth. But I'm really not on LinkedIn a whole lot. But I am... Uh, active, of course, on Facebook and active on Twitter. 
And so you can follow us on those three social networks. Now, uh, December the 4th, 2017, that's tomorrow, I will be preaching at Life Resurrection Community Church. And that is right here in my um, place where I live in Lincoln, Rhode Island. I was going to say my hometown, but I wasn't born here in Lincoln, Rhode Island. I was born in New Bedford, Massachusetts. But um, right here in the town in which we live, Lincoln, Rhode Island, the church is just right around the corner from us. I will be preaching December 4th at Life Resurrection Community Church. Steve Gomes is the pastor, really good friend of mine, great guy. They support our ministry. We're looking forward to being with all of them as I'll be teaching on current world events in light of biblical prophecy. And then after the service, Sunday afternoon, Patty and I, my wife and I, join aboard a plane and we'll be flying to Texas. We will be flying to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We'll be there for about eight days. And, of course, uh, I will be there at the pre-trib conference put on by the pre-trib research study group. Dr. Tommy Ice, of course, was founded by the late uh, Dr. Tim LaHaye. And so um, I will be there. Uh, we'll be seeing all of my friends while we are out there. Other Bible prophecy teachers are going to be out there. We'll have a table set up and a banner set up. And so uh, we are indeed looking forward. We I missed going there last year because I was in Israel with Dr. Todd Baker um, of Zola Levitt Ministries. And so we were out there for the two weeks, uh, especially for Hanukkah. That was awesome. And, of course, Hanukkah begins December 24th. It is late in December, the day before Christmas. And so that is the eight-day celebration. We have a lot to get into that right now. But we'll talk about Hanukkah as we get into uh, closer to Christmas Eve. And so that will be eight days. But um, we were there for Hanukkah in Israel last December. 2015 had a wonderful time out there and it was just seeing all the Hanukkah lights lit up in Israel was awesome and so uh, but we won't be in Israel in December but we will be in Israel January 2017 again my friend Dr. Todd Baker and myself will go to Israel for 12 days to evangelize the Jewish people share the gospel and of course we'll be teaching Bible prophecy on location as well but then you can also join me <clears throat> for the prophecy tour to Israel, March 25th through April the 5th. So you can contact me if you have any questions about this trip. We would love to have you join us. And so what I want to do right now, folks, is I want to get into a statement that was made by the theorist, if you will, the physicist, Stephen Hawkins. And so um, what I want to do is get into uh, that news event of the day. He said, um, we are living at the most dangerous time in human history. And if I may, um, <clears throat> you know, look, actually, you know, I can just quote it to you out of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, where Paul the Apostle gives us a last days scenario. He says, this know also that in the last days, Perilous times shall come. I believe we're living in those perilous times right now. And he gives us the 19 scenarios <clears throat> that are found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1-5. through 5. He says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, <clears throat> covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, Petty, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Nineteen different scenarios that we find in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 5 that we see unfolding right now in the last days that we're living in. We are right now living in the last days of the church age. So Paul the Apostle, 2,000 years ago, gave us a very disturbing trend that, folks, we see unfolding before our eyes right now. The Apostle tells us these events would transpire in the last days. Now, we have been in the last days, folks, for nearly two thousand years. You say, so what's the big deal then? Well, here's the big deal. The birth of the Lord Jesus 
in a little town of Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. The birth of Jesus initiated the last days. We have been in the last days ever since. The last days that we are in today are intensifying, ladies and gentlemen. Sure, it was bad in the first century AD in the time of the Lord. But folks, today it is absolutely unprecedented. It is absolutely horrendous what we see going on today. There's no longer any respect for human life. People don't have fear of authority anymore. I mean, people won't even think twice to go and kill a police officer. No fear of authority anymore. No respect for life anymore, whether it's the uh, unborn or whatever. There's no respect for life anymore. And even those who live godly biblical principles are despised by the world. Even in our own society here in America, despised for speaking out against sinful practices, sinful lifestyles. And so the birth of Jesus initiated the last days. We've been in the last days for 2,000 years. However, the Bible predicts the coming apostasy in the last days that will set the stage for the appearing of the coming Antichrist. Now, John the Apostle in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 says, Little children, he's talking to the church, believers, little children, it is the last time or the last days. And as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. That's future tense. <clears throat> Excuse me. Even now, there are many Antichrists. They're all over the place. They're all over the world. They're outside the church, and unfortunately, they're even in the church. Antichrist shall come, even though there are many Antichrists, whereby ye know it is the last time or the last days. So John the Apostle tells us that in the last days, little Antichrist, we have, again, they're in politics, they're all over the place. They're in the church, they're outside the church, they're everywhere. And it's these individuals that oppose all that is good. They oppose all that is holy. They oppose those who are living a, a godly lifestyle. They oppose those who have the fear of God, who speak out against sin, are, are just being villainized in the world today, including here in America. But folks, we know that at the rapture of the church, those last days that we're living in right now, the last days will turn into the end times. I differentiate between the last days and the end times. The last days will be the last days of the church age, okay? From Pentecost up until the rapture of the church. And when the church has been raptured, the last days will turn into the end times. That seven year period of tribulation to come. As a matter of fact, the end times uh, will cover the tribulation period, which is seven years. It will cover the second coming. It will cover the 1,000 year millennial kingdom reign of the Lord Jesus, but it stops at the great white throne judgment of Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. So at the rapture of the church, 2,000 years of church age history comes to a screeching halt. Then the end times will begin, again, covering the seven-year period of tribulation, known as a time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Jesus calls it great tribulation, Matthew 24, 21. John the apostle calls it great tribulation, Revelation 7, 14. It'll cover the second coming. That's when Jesus returns at the end of the tribulation period. But then the end times will come to a halt. It will cease at the great white throne judgment in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. Now, the prediction of perilous times indicates 
that apostasy will characterize the final days of the church age. And folks, we see that going on right now. There is so much heresy and so much apostasy in the church today. It grieves my spirit to no end. To see how Christians today are falling into so much heresy and apostasy. And the reason for that is simply because they are not taking the scriptures for their plain sense interpretation. Plain and simple, folks. They are not looking at the scriptures for their grammatical, historical, and literal plain sense interpretation. They go off on wild tangents or they find some, I'm sorry to be, I'm not trying to be mean spirit, they find some nutcase, some prophecy fanatic on TV or listen to some prophecy fanatic on the radio and then they get all of this kooky doctrine from them and then they go along with it. You know, and that's exactly what we see going on today. That perilous times will characterize the final days of the church age. When you look at the word perilous, it simply means dangerous, hazardous, unsafe. You know, don't walk into this electrical area. It's perilous. In other words, it's a warning for you to keep out because it's a very, it's a dangerous area. It's hazardous. It's unsafe. Or during the winter time, if you want to go ice fishing, you know, uh, they'll put a sign on there, uh, perilous or dangerous, thin ice. You know, you're at risk of losing your life. It's dangerous. It's hazardous. It's unsafe. You know, or during the summertime, if a hurricane's coming or a, a very fierce storm, don't go swimming. The waters are perilous, dangerous, hazardous, unsafe. Many definitions that we can go by here. But at, folks, as I said already, there are 19 last days scenarios that we see predicted in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 5, that are right now unfolding, right before our eyes. 19 specific last days scenarios. One of them is that men will be lovers of their own selves. It's all about me, myself, and I. I don't care about you. I don't care about anybody else. It's all about me. You know, and, you know, I don't even want to bring this guy up because I'm I, I, not even a fan of this guy. But that rapper, he calls himself Snoop Dogg. He says, you know something? I really don't have a care for anything in the world. I got my mind on my money and my money on my mind. You know, that's the, actually, that's a worst case scenario right there. That's an example of somebody who's a lover of their own selves. And then he says, those uh, that would be covetous, you know, I want what you have. I want everything. Uh, Donald Trump's a multi-billionaire. I want everything that he has. I want that kind of money. I want your wife. I want your girl. I want this. I want that. Even though if it doesn't belong to me, I want it. We live in a day and age today of covetousness. Black Friday is a prime example. Do you know that three people across the nation lost their lives over Black Friday? Because you got people fighting with each other because I want that. I was there first. I saw that first. My hand was on it first. And then fist fights break out. People are trampling over each other, just like a bunch of animals. They're trampling over each other like wild cattle. People are getting robbed and shot in the parking lots, you know, because they are getting robbed of their um, of their purchases. You know, we live in a day and age of covetousness. Boasters, you know, look what I know. I'm better than you. I know more than you know. And, you know, even you even got those in the church today among some Christians who you know, think that they know it all from A to Z. They think they're the best thing since sliced bread. And they want to try to put you in your place, tell you what you ought to know. And if they argue or debate with you, 
They want to feed that ego to prove you wrong and to tear you up so that they can walk away patting themselves on the shoulder. Frankly, I have no use for such people. Proud. Uh, that People who are arrogant. Prideful. That's out of Proverbs 6, verses 16 through 19. God says, these six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imagination, feet that be swift to run in mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, he that soweth discord among brethren. God said, I hate those six deadly sins, but that seventh one God calls an abomination. God said, it sticks in my craw, and this seventh one are what Christians are doing today in the church. Sowing discord among brethren. God says it's an abomination. Blasphemers. Those who take the name of God uh, in vain every single day. Blaspheming God. Hollywood blasphemes God every single day. Hollywood movies taking God's name in vain. You know, blaspheming the name of God. You know, blaspheming the name of Jesus. Blaspheming the name of the Holy Spirit. Man, do we see that going on today. Disobedient to parents. I mean, I've never seen a generation today of kids so disrespectful to their parents. I've been in stores like Walmart and other areas where I've seen young kids taking a temper tantrum because they didn't get what they want or their mother or father wouldn't buy it for them. And if their mother and father disciplines them, you know, for acting that way, which they rightfully deserve, and then, of course, the state gets in and they'll arrest you. You know, uh, disobedient to parents, I've seen teenagers cussing their father, cussing their mother. And that's right out of Proverbs. There's a generation that curses their father and does not obey their mother. Why do we see that going on today? A generation of young, disobedient individuals. Unthankful. We live in such an unthankful society today. You do something for somebody, you know, you get no thanks. In return, you go out of the way, you be nice to someone. They're not nice back to you. Now, you don't do that because you want, you know, you want reciprocation. You know, we ought to do things nice whether we, you know, there's a reciprocation or not. But folks, we live in a very ungrateful, unthankful world. When I was preaching in uh, Florida, I was driving toward, um, into Chick-fil-A. There was a guy out there, and he was holding a sign that says, um, hungry, need food. So I rolled down my window, and I said, sir, why don't you meet me inside of Chick-fil-A? I'll buy you uh, lunch. He looked right at me and he said, no, you can get it, then you can bring it out here. With an attitude. I said, for somebody who is desperate, you got a lot of demands, don't you? Folks, again, a very unthankful society we live in today. Unholy. I mean, there is unholiness everywhere. Ungodliness abounds everywhere around the world. In America, ungodliness is everywhere. Uh, unholy. No natural affection. People no longer have sympathy for others anymore. There's no sympathy. There's love. There's nothing there. People today will take your life and not even think twice about it. Truce breakers. How many peace treaties have been signed over the centuries and you still got war going on in the world? The United Nations, which is nothing but the United Nothing, they've been created to exist to bring peace to the world. And they've been failing every since. Listen, there'll never be any peace until the Prince of Peace, the Sar Shalom, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, is one day reigning on this earth. Israel has signed many peace treaties, and the Arab world still wants to see them annihilated. False accusers. Have you ever been accused of something that you did not do? You know you didn't do it, but yet you're, you've been falsely accused. You've got people that are sitting in prisons right now that have been in jail for years, 40, 50 years, until new evidence come, came up, and they were falsely accused. And then, of course, they've been uh, vindicated, and they have been set free after nearly losing half of their lives in prison. False accusers. Incontinent. In other words, people just have n no mercy. No mercy or anything like that anymore. Fierce. There have been... I mean, we just heard of a, uh, an ex-NFL player uh, that was just shot and killed. I believe it was in um, Louisiana. Was shot and killed. This guy played for four years for the New York Jets. Was shot and killed over road rage. 
I mean, did, did you actually have to shoot and kill the guy because he cut you off on the highway? Or he would have moved when the light turned green? I mean, people today are just fierce. Despisers of those that are good. People today hate born-again, godly, Christian believers. Because they, stay, they take a stand for what is right. They take a stand for what is holy. They speak out against sin. They speak out against sinful lifestyles. And the world today is crucifying them for it. We live in a world today where you have those that are despisers of those that are good. When you have a lady who owns a florist who refuses to make a floral arrangement for a same-sex couple, well, the state comes down on that individual, finds them hundreds of thousands of dollars, puts them out of business, that person gets death threats simply because that person is sticking to their Christian faith. You know? And yet those who hold to the same sex lifestyle call born again believers intolerant, but really the ones that are intolerant of them. Because they come after them, put them out of business. The same thing happened with a Christian couple who owned a bakery in Oregon. Put out of business, paid thousands and thousands of dollars in fines. Their kids were being beaten up in school simply because they stuck to their Christian biblical principles and they were crucified for it. Despises of those that are good. Traitors. Someone who smiles in your face and the moment you, they turn around, stab you right in the back. Reminds me of that, that old, uh, remember that um, the Otis's, I think, the all-black singing group, they smile in your face and all the while they want to take your place, backstabbers. Traitors. That's exactly what they are. Heady, they're puffed up. Big, swollen head, think they know everything. High-minded, think they're better than you. Lovers of pleasures. Oh, we see that in the pornographic industry today. You know, I mean, it's everywhere. They're lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And then the final one, the 19th one, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such... Turn away. In other words, folks, a form of godliness is empty religion. It's mere religion without the power of God. It's mere religion without a spiritual life. It is an empty void of religiosity without <clears throat> a true born-again relationship with the Lord Jesus. They know Jesus up here, but he's not down here. He's not in the heart. You see these guys on Christian TV, you listen to them on Christian radio, they have a form of godliness, but they'll deny the word of God. In 2 Timothy 4.1, Paul says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times or the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils or demons. Paul said that in the last days in 2 Timothy 4, 1, or, or 1 Timothy 4, 1, rather, the Holy Spirit will clearly reveal that you will have those in the church who will forsake the Christian faith and embrace the doctrines of demons. They will embrace the doctrines of devils. In other words, they'll depart Christianity, biblical Christianity, now, that word Christian means nothing anymore. Everybody claims they're a Christian today. The cults like the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses, they all claim to be Christians, but yet their doctrine totally departs from the authority of the Scriptures, the Word of God. To depart means to apostatize, to apostatize. That's pretty much what it is. What is apostasy? We have many different definitions, but apostasy is the deliberate and permanent rejection of Christianity after a previous profession. In other words, you professed Christianity. You believed in all the tenets and doctrines of biblical Christianity. And then down the road, you got slammed into some other cult. And then you totally have forsaken all of that. You want nothing to do with it anymore. You embraced a doctrine that is foreign to the doctrines that are in the Word of God. Doctrines of devils are the doctrines of demons. So what is the doctrine of demons? What is the doctrine of devils? Well, those who deny the infallibility of the scriptures, the Bible, 
They deny the deity of Christ. They deny his vicarious death for all mankind. And they'll deny his soon return. That's the last day scenario right there. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Peter said, this know also that in the last days, there it is again, last days will be scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. In the last days, you'll have those who will deny the soon return of the Lord Jesus. And believe it or not, the majority of these mockers are those who are in the church today. It's unbelievable. Again, folks, a breaking news story. Uh, theoretic physicist Stephen Hawking in an interview stated, and I quote, we're at the most dangerous moment in human history. Now, you know, Stephen Hawkins is a humanist and he is an atheist. And I'm no fan of the man. But what he did say, folks, even though he did not realize it, is a page out of Bible prophecy. He's not telling us nothing new. He's telling us something. He's just finding out that the Bible predicted 2,000 years ago. Well, what is a humanist? A humanist is someone who believes in order to better man, you must better society. The problem, according to the humanist, is not the heart of man. The problem is society. If you better society, then you better the heart of man. No, 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 no. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible makes it very clear. That the source of the problem of society today is the heart of man. Remember Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jesus said in Mark, Jesus himself in Mark 7, 21 through 23. For from within, out of the heart of man proceedeth evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. The humanists are wrong. Society is not the problem. Man and man's heart is the problem. And the only way the heart of man can be changed is not by bettering society. It's by coming into a born-again relationship <clears throat> with the Lord Jesus as personal Savior. But when Stephen Hawkins made that statement, he said he saw the incoming Trump administration, Brexit, in other words, British leaving the European Union, as major, major dangerous signs. Hawking went to say, he says, the world is facing crippling challenges, including climate change, food production or shortage of food production, overpopulation, the decimation of other species, epidemic disease, the acidification of the oceans. He says, together... They are a reminder that we are at the most dangerous moment in the development of humanity. We now have the technology to destroy the planet on which we live, but have not yet developed the ability to escape us. Again, even though Hawking is a humanist and an atheist, what he does not realize is that his statement is a page out of Bible prophecy. So when he talks about <clears throat> climate change, well, folks, that's right out of Revelation, chapter 6, uh, and verses 8 and 9. Revelation chapter 6, verses 8 and 9. And oh, Actually, let me go to Revelation. I'll go back to that, but Revelation 16. Revelation 16. And it says this. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And power is given unto him to scorch men with fire, and men would scorch with great heat, and blaspheme the name of God which hath power over these plagues, and repented not to give him glory. In other words, the climate gives way. The ozone layer gives way. The sun scorches men on the earth so bad that they gnaw their tongues in pain. Jesus said that there would be cataclysmic convulsions in the skies. And by the way, that's out of Luke 21, 25. Remember, Joel 3 says the same thing. Jesus said, there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. Upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. They're seeing the waves roaring. 
men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking on those things that are coming on the earth for the power of the heavens shall be shaken. Hawkins, you know, he, he, he talks about a food shortage. That's out of Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. That when the rider on the black horse, the rider on the black horse, which represents, by the way, uh, famine. The rider on the black horse, verses 5 and 6, when they open the third seal, I, the, I hear the third beast say, come and see. And lo, a black horse, he that sat upon him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny. Three measures of barley for a penny, and see, thou hurt not the oil or the wine. A penny is known as a denarius, and it represented a Roman's day wage. You work for one week, only enough to get a morsel of bread. Food shortage. The scales would refer to uh, commerce. It would refer to trade. So a global food shortage. Hawkins was talking about that overpopulation. Do you know that at, you know Hawkins was talking about overpopulation? The world is overpopulated. He's right, it is. But you know that during the time of Noah's flood, it was estimated that the world population was one billion with a B. One billion. Today we have over seven billion people populating planet Earth. Yet Revelation six eight tells us that during the opening of the sealed judgments. One-fourth of humanity is wiped out. That's one and a half billion people. Then in Revelation 9, 15, 9, 18, another one-third of humanity is wiped out. Another one and a half billion people. So from the seal and trumpet judgments in the book of Revelation, close to three and a half to four billion people will lose their lives. It will reduce the world's population to one-half its pre-tribulation level. Hawkins talks about epidemic disease. Again, it's Revelation chapter 6 and verse number 8. He says, I look and behold the fourth seal. And he heard the fourth beast say, come and see. And look and behold the pale horse. His name is Saturn was death and hell followed with him. Power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. One fourth of humanity to kill with sword. That would be war. With hunger. That's famine. With death, global death. And with the beast of the earth. That's through uh, plagues disease and animal attacks the beast of the earth and then he says the the there will be um the acidification of the oceans the, and we see that going on right now but again he's telling us nothing new that's a page right out of bible prophecy what's going to happen to the oceans well in revelation uh chapter 8 <clears throat> revelation chapter 8 Verses eight and nine, and the second angel sounded, and it were and it were a great and it, I'll get it right, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood, and a third part of the creatures or the fish, which were in the sea and had life died, and a third part of the ships were destroyed. Verse number ten, and a third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp. And fell upon a third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water. So in other words, not only will the oceans be affected in the tribulation period. And all aquatic life, all sea life dies. The drinking water will be affected as well. Verse 11. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And a third part of the waters came Wormwood, became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. But then we also see in Revelation chapter um, 16. And verse number three, with the opening, uh, the, actually the pouring out of the bowl judgments. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. And it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. Whew. Folks, the last days we see now are racing toward the events described by Stephen Hawking to unfold in the tribulation period. Again, Stephen Hawking is telling us nothing new. What he said is a page right out of Bible prophecy. We are racing toward the end times. And the last day's events that we see going on right now, those 19 specific scenarios we find in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, unfolding right before our very eyes, is signifying that we know the rapture of the church, ladies and gentlemen, is so close at hand. We know 
the next prophetic event on God's calendar of events is the rapture of the church of the living God. And all we can say to that, folks, is Maranatha. Even so come, Lord Jesus. But if you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on Blog Talk Radio, and you're saying to yourself, August, I don't have that assurance of going to heaven when I die. Or if the rapture was to happen right now, Jesus was to descend from heaven, I don't have that assurance that I'd go up to meet him in the air. I need assurance, August. Can you show me how to get saved? It's as simple as ABC, folks. A, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10, Romans 3.23. We're all sinners in need of a Savior. Number two, Romans 10.13. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believing is not just a simple head belief. It's believing right here in the heart, folks. Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. C, confess your sins to the Lord. Again, that brings me to Romans 10, 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, not to a man, but thy mouth, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Confess your sins to him. Ask him to save you from your sins. Ask him to come into your heart. Forgive you of all your sins. You say, August, could you help me to do that? Absolutely. Pray something like this. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. And you sent your son to die for my sins. God, you love me enough to send your son to die for me. I repent of my sins today. Change of heart, change of mind, change of attitude toward my sin and toward God. And Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Wash my sins away by your precious blood. Change and transform my life. Help me to be a new creature a new creation in you. I give my life to you, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins. And I now receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, hey, if you prayed that prayer, we'd love to hear from you. Send me an email. August dot today in Bible prophecy at gmail dot com. August dot today in Bible prophecy at gmail dot com. Don't forget to visit my website today in Bible prophecy dot o r g. Sign up for my newsletter while you are there. You can also look at all of our video, audio, pictures of Israel and Rome, places that we've been to. Sign up for our trip to Israel, March 25th through April the 5th, 2017, including Israel and Petra in Southern Jordan. All-inclusive, folks, all-inclusive. If you want more information, uh, go to the website, christiantoursteisrael.com. Call E.L. Evan, 1-888-300-3038. Let him know that you want to join us in Israel, March 25th through April the 5th, including Petra in Southern Jordan join. Well, folks, next time I come to you, we should be back from Irving, Texas. We'll see how that works out. And so uh, we're looking to find a church out there to speak at while I'm at the conference. And so it's it's like trying to pull teeth. But um, pray for us as we go out there to the pre-trip conference. And uh, we appreciate all of you for tuning in to the program today. So remember, if you got saved, if you prayed that prayer, then I want to hear from you. Send me that email. Get in contact with me. Follow me on the social networks, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Until next week, this is August Rosado saying, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. And pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.